everyone and welcome to a new video. In today's video I'm going to introduce you to a new series on this channel and also talk a little bit about the future of this channel and the fact that I now have a Patreon. I realize those latter two topics aren't going to interest everyone so I will leave them for the end, but if you enjoy my channel and the content I've put out so far then I really hope you will listen to the entire thing. And on that note, let's get right into the fun stuff. So the series I want to announce is something I came up with back in October. As I'm sure you guys will know, throughout 2017 I wasn't particularly active on social media or on this channel, but towards the end of the year I was trying to think of ways to fix that and projects I could take on that would lend themselves well to being filmed and would be interesting for you to watch, as well as interesting for me to make. And eventually I came up with the idea to sew my way through original historical patterns from the 20th century. This was completely inspired by Etsy, who decided to recommend a bunch of vintage patterns to me out of nowhere. The more I thought about this, the more excited I got, and I eventually developed it into the idea of following one original vintage pattern from every decade of the 20th century, and I even came up with the name for it, Sewing Through the Decades. I thought this was very clever, but it turns out I'm not that clever, or at least I'm not the first person to be this clever, because this idea has been used by dozens if not hundreds of bloggers over the past 10 years. Some of them have even used this title. So even though I came up with this independently, I did want to mention that. I don't want to come off as if I'm stealing this idea or claiming that I am the only person to have ever done this or come up with this. With that out of the way, let's talk more about the project. So as I said, I will be following at least one pattern from every decade of the 20th century, and these are original vintage patterns. I'm not using reproductions, reprints, re-releases, anything like that. The pattern tissue and sleeve are all from whatever decade they correspond with, because patterns have changed so much over the last hundred years, and I think that's part of the fun of doing this project, is seeing all of those changes in both the tissue paper themselves as well as the instructions and the pattern diagram. I've tried to pick patterns that are a good representation of the decade they come from, and I've also picked more practical fabrics for this project that can be washed and worn so these garments will be functional, hopefully as they would have been 50 or 100 or 30 years ago, depending on what decade they come from. And I I haven't shied away from different types of patterns, I'm going to be working with all different brands and making all different types of garments. So there are some shirt patterns in there, some pants patterns, some shorts patterns, some full skirts, some fitted skirts, some dresses. I think in total I purchased 25 or so patterns just because so many of the decades that I plan on making garments for require multiple pieces to make a completed outfit. So this definitely isn't going to be a series of 15 dresses, though that would be a lot of fun too. I think the reason I really latched onto this idea is because it really combines my interest with a lot of the things that I've been requested to film. I've gotten so many requests to make more pattern videos, some of my most popular videos are relating to mid-century dresses, and I'm constantly being asked to make more wearable pieces and videos. So those should fulfill those requests while also combining my love of vintage fashion, my desire to expand my vintage-inspired wardrobe, and also seeing fashion transition throughout a period. Quite hopeful that this will give you a new appreciation for fashion from the 20th century. In fact, I think it already has. It's no secret that I like the Edwardian era, and I'm quite fascinated by mid-century dresses, but I've never had much interest in fashion from the 20th century beyond that. In fact, I've always considered it quite boring and even ugly at times. My passion is definitely still much stronger towards 17th, 18th, and 19th century dresses, just because the form is so much more exaggerated and there are so many more details to add to those dresses. And ruffles. You guys know how much I love ruffles. But part of what attracted me to historical costumes in the first place is the dramatic silhouettes and how drastically those silhouettes have changed. But the more I've looked at it, the more I've realized that silhouettes have changed pretty dramatically in the 20th century too. So I think I'm going to enjoy making garments for each decade and really getting to know those changes firsthand when it comes to garment construction in addition to actually wearing the garments. So I think this project is going to be a lot of fun for me and hopefully it will be fun for you guys too. The other nice thing about this pattern project is that these projects are much faster for me to construct than a historical gown, which means filming the process and getting that edited down and uploaded is a lot more sustainable for me when it comes to these patterns as opposed to an 18th century gown. The first video in this series is going to be published on Saturday, which I'm really excited about. I've already filmed the first four, and I think the first two are my least favorite out of those four, just because it took me a while to get into filming voiceovers and figuring out how I want to edit and format them, but hopefully you will enjoy it regardless. And if you can't wait until Saturday, uh, then people supporting me on Patreon will get early access to it. It should be live right now, so maybe that is something to consider. So I'm very confident that I can keep up with this and upload one or two videos of these a month. I'm also quite hopeful of what this could turn into in the future. 
future. I really like this concept of focusing on garments from every decade, and I think it would be fun to repeat this with evening gowns or wedding dresses or pajamas or coats. Most of the patterns I've purchased for this project so far are for day dresses or workwear, since those were the most affordable. I think expanding it into other categories would be a lot of fun and really interesting to look at once I'm done. Or even taking this project into a different century and following a bunch of patterns from Janet Arnold's books or Norwaz. We could do this with dresses or chemises or corsets or anything like that. Or I could draft my own patterns and follow my own designs but keep them restricted to a specific decade each month. But those projects would obviously require a lot more time to make as well as a lot more fabric to construct. So to actually do that I would need some help. In fact this entire channel kind of needs help. So this is going to bring me on to the next topic which is the future of this channel as well as the fact that I now have a Patreon. Part of the reason I was so inactive in 2017 was because I felt very burned out and burned by social media. I've seen my earnings consistently go down even though my overall view count is going up. It's very discouraging when you're investing time and money into creating content and you're seeing your viewership and your earnings go down just based off of changes in the algorithm that are beyond your control. Sorry for the fact I've had lipstick on my teeth this entire time. I just noticed. And this is an especially big problem with YouTube. They have admitted to glitches where videos don't go into all of people's subscription boxes, and that there is a problem with videos being demonetized. This is a really big issue because it usually pops up right after you publicize a video, and it can take between three days and two weeks to get it resolved, which means you lose out on pretty much all of the revenue that video will make in its lifetime. It also means your video isn't recommended as much because it's considered not appropriate for some reason, which means it goes on to get much fewer views. It has nothing to do with the content I'm putting out there and I've been able to get it resolved on all of my videos but not before losing out on most of the money they would make. So my videos don't make money. In fact, they usually end up losing money. I know I have some that I spent two weeks filming and editing and $80 of material to construct and those videos have gone on to make $20. And this isn't something new for my channel, but I think the older I get and the closer I get to the age where people are joining the workforce, the more I realize how unsustainable YouTube is as a form of revenue. And this really sucks to say, and this makes me feel like a big jerk saying this because I appreciate the support I've gotten on YouTube so much, and regardless of any problems I've had with the algorithms, I still get a huge amount of support and I get so many kind comments. And I don't want to make it seem like those don't have value to me because they have a huge amount of value to me. But I think at some point you have to decide what your time is worth and my time is worth more than the money and fulfillment that I currently get out of YouTube. There are just better, more profitable things that I need to be doing with my time, at least if it continues on the way it is. But I don't just want to give up on it that easily because this is something that I really enjoy doing and though it isn't necessarily something that I want to do forever, it is something that I would be willing and excited to put more time into if I could see that enthusiasm paying off in the form of an actual paycheck. <laughs> so I've decided to give this one big last try in the form of the Sewing Through the Decades project. And thanks to so many people who were incredibly generous and donated to me through Kofi, I've been able to purchase most of the materials I need, as well as some of the patterns for my Sewing Through the Decades series. So I really, really appreciate all of those donations and that support, which has made this possible. It really does mean more to me than I can even say. But that brings me on to Patreon. So if you're unfamiliar with Patreon, it is a fan funding site where you can fund artists and creators on a monthly basis. I believe you can pledge monthly however much you want, but those pledges usually align with tiers that the creators have set up. So I believe my Patreon is going to have five tiers, and the lowest one is only going to be a dollar, and it will give you access to my videos one to two weeks in advance. It's worth noting that if even 1% of my subscribers donated one dollar to my Patreon monthly, that would be enough for me to invest a significant amount of time into creating content. Like, get back onto a weekly schedule, if not more, type of thing. Uh, that would just be fantastic. The next tier up from that will not only give you early access, but exclusive access to videos that you won't find anywhere else. I'm going to try and do more Q&As and daily sewing vlogs and sort of smaller videos that I can upload on a more consistent basis, as well as mock-up mayhem vlogs, which are something I'm really excited about. These videos show me going through the process of making a mock-up for each pattern in the Sewing Through the Decade series, and some of the patterns are a little bit complicated or a little unclear in terms of instructions, so I think seeing my first impression of them and me trying to work my way through them is pretty entertaining, and I hope you will find it entertaining too. The first one of those is going to be available publicly, but the rest of them are going to be Patreon exclusive. I'd also like to eventually make some smaller patterns and live streams available for that tier, but I don't have those planned just yet. 
I'm also going to have a tier where you can vote in polls and pick what projects I make next and what materials I use, as well as a tier where you get little postcard prints, and another one that will come with a note that has behind the scenes information about that project, as well as swatches of all of the materials that I use to create it. So I'm really, really excited about this. I know the rewards aren't like top notch yet. I'm definitely willing and excited to continue adding to them and make them better and make them more worthwhile for you. It's also worth noting that even though a lot of the rewards are vloggy type of content, the money that I make from that is going to give me the opportunity to invest more time as well as money into materials for making up content. So if those are the videos you really like seeing, contributing to my Patreon will result in more of them even though it might not result in them being exclusive to Patreon. I also want to briefly talk about my goals for Patreon. So number one is making enough to pay back the money I've invested in the Sewing Through the Decades project thus far, as well as enough to cover the material costs for other videos that I make throughout a month. I'd also like to improve my setup a little bit, get more memory cards, um, get an additional battery and charger for the camera I have. And if this ends up being really successful, long-term goals would include getting another camera so I could take multiple angles at once and not have to move the camera around as much, as well as getting a computer that can either use a program more powerful than iMovie or actually use iMovie and iTunes at the same time without crashing. Because that really inhibits my editing ability sometimes, and it'd be really nice to have a computer that could keep up with the amount of editing I actually want to do. But that is obviously a long-term goal and not something I'm going to invest in unless I see this project being successful beyond the Sewing Through the Decades project. I hope this doesn't sound greedy, but basically anything beyond those material costs that it covers is going to be treated like a salary. So the more that I get from Patreon, the more I will give back to you guys in terms of content, because the more time I will be able to justify editing and creating stuff for this channel. So that could potentially involve speeding up the Sewing Through the Decades timeline by a lot. Right now I'm planning on following one pattern or making all of the patterns for one decade each month, so it'll take me approximately a year to finish this series. But if this ends up being successful, I could see putting out two or three videos relating to this project a month. I would also absolutely love to take on bonus projects for this series. I found so many cool patterns that don't do a good job of representing that period, so I don't want to make them the primary project for that decade. Like, for example, this is the pattern I purchased for the 1960s. It is a work style dress, which I think is very 1960s in style. But I also found this super fun collapse pattern that would be so much fun to follow and so much fun to show you guys the process of making. So if I made enough to justify the additional time it would take me to film and edit that project, I would be absolutely happy to do it. And there are projects like this for pretty much every decade, so I definitely wouldn't run out of ideas for this anytime soon. And if this goes well, then I can obviously continue this project and continue making videos on a more regular basis. The options really are endless in terms of what I can continue to do on this platform as long as I have the money to be able to justify doing it. Also, for those of you who can't or won't be supporting me on Patreon, there will still be public content going up on this channel. Uh, it's always been my goal to share as much of my process with you guys as I can. It's just that people on Patreon will see a little bit more of that process. As for other ways to contribute to the channel, I do have a Ko-fi account which allows for small one-time donations, so I will link that down below. Also, watching and interacting with videos really helps. Um, no one knows how YouTube's algorithm works, but it is known that videos that get more comments and likes and views and interactions are more likely to go up in their rankings. So that really helps me out. And I think that is where I'm going to end this. So thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about any of the things I've talked about, then please feel free to ask them in the comment section down below and I will try and get back to you. I'm also going to put a whole bunch of links and additional information in the description box. So hopefully that will clear some stuff up too. I really hope you're looking forward to the Sewing Through the Decades series and I really hope you will consider supporting me on Patreon. And I shall talk to all of you guys very, very soon.